Now, if you've been around for a little while, you've heard of the Katie trial, but if you're new to psychiatry, you may not have. This was a huge study funded by the federal government, by the NIMH, with our tax dollars, mm -hmm. along with two other large studies looking at different diseases, major depressive disorder and bipolar disorder. They had their own sort of Katie trials going on. Katie was for schizophrenia. There was also a Katie for Alzheimer's, but we're going to talk about the Katie for schizophrenia. There were close to 2,000 patients screened across many trial sites across the U.S. Eventually, close to 1,500 were randomized and about 1,400 received medicine. But Katie wasn't a simple study. It was all about the phases. This was a switch study. Patients were initially randomized double-blind to receive alanzapine, quetiapine, risperidone, zeprazidone, or perfenazine, a first-generation antipsychotic, and they would be eligible to remain on that for 18 months if things worked out. But this was a switch study, and if things didn't work out and patients wanted to switch and the clinician investigator thought switching was a good idea, there was phase two. Phase two permitted a switch to something perhaps better in terms of efficacy or better in terms of tolerability. It depended on the individual situation the patient found themselves in. So there are two parts to phase two, a clozapine pathway and a zeprazidone pathway. At the time the study was done, clozapine was considered and still is the most efficacious drug we have out there. And zeprazidone at the time was considered the most tolerable drug that we had available. And it turned out that some patients would prefer to be in the clozapine pathway and some in the zeprazidone pathway. And it was essentially double blind with the exception of those who received clozapine. Now, if that didn't work out, there was always phase three. So this was a switch study. Patients entered the study knowing that switches were possible. There were also other aspects of KD that made it kind of interesting in terms of phase 1A and phase 1B. These are more subtle phases of KD that allows a more granular examination of what happens when you, for example, you fail perfenazine and get re-randomized and you, before you even get to phase two. So lots of different aspects about KD make it really fascinating, but essentially a switch study, one, two, and three.